Hey, 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 good morning, everyone, and welcome to Talking Wellbeing TV, where we share hints, tips, and advice about the foundations of wellbeing. It's Peter here from Strong Healthy Women, and I am joined by Sally Ann, and Sue is uh, still having trouble with her camera, but there is a little blank spot there for her. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Sal, hey, Sue. Hey, Peter. Hi, hey, Peter. Sue. Hi, Sal. <laughs> oh dear it's so uh, it is and we've got a, a bit of noise happening <laughs> and a bit of funny stuff going on right now so Sally Ann's cat just wants to keep me yowling and walking in front of the uh, camera and Sue's uh, living she lives down the Gold Coast and <laughs> the fire engines just keep going past all the time so I'll, you know, just bear with us. We'll try and get it done. <laughs> so we are here with our Friday fun day. And so, of course, that's just all part of the fun, isn't it? It is. It's so, life. But Yeah, it is life. It is. Um, uh, we have those moments where, uh, where everything goes right and then, you know, things just all happen. So I don't know whether anybody out there has uh, read uh, Matthew McConaughey's um, book, Green Lights. I love uh, this book. Um, my, I've, there's been a number of books recently that I've read, read, but this one in particular, I love that he talks about green lights and green lights are those things that you you get to do that you have permission to do or that go really well for you and, you know, it's just that signal to go and I love that green light but what he says is yellow lights or orange lights whatever you call them yellow lights and red lights they eventually turn green how cool yeah. is that I love that yeah. isn't that yeah. fantastic isn't that fantastic yeah I love yeah. it um and it's so true you know when we're in the midst of this massive thing that we think is not going to change or that um, it's just all overwhelming and things are not going to go right, that it, it it does. It eventually pans out. And I know for my, myself personally, you know, some of the biggest lessons that I've had in life have come from the most difficult situations that I've encountered. So... And here we go. It's my turn to have the interruptions. So I've got a plane that's just, I can just hear it in the background. So, <laughs> But one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, because I just saw a little uh, post come up in our message group from the lovely Diane. Now, I think Diane turns 80 this year, I think off the top of my head. Um, and she just posted up, you know, how her back was sore. And that, you know, now that she's done her workout, her back isn't sore anymore. So she's actually warmed it up and she's got the muscles moving and the blood is flowing. And oh, so often what can happen is that when we're feeling those aches and pains and niggles somewhere, it can stop us from doing something. But it hasn't stopped Diane. Um, and I'm also thinking about um, Kim, who emailed me one day. Uh, and she said, I know that I should be doing the core workouts. She said, but I avoid the core workouts because I know that I have a weak core, but I have a sore back and I know that's because it's coming from my core, but I'm avoiding the very thing that's actually going to help me do it. So, again, we can make that choice, can't we, where we can um, see it as something that we can embrace. So, Sal, do you want to talk to us a little bit about, um, yeah, Diane, because I know that you've worked out with her a couple of times during the course of the week. Tell me yes. what she's been doing really, really well, because I know there's something that you wanted to talk about. I do. And the thing that, and I did um, make it make a point of telling Di Diane this this morning, that she needs to be proud of herself mm. for what she was doing. The main thing or the bottom line is she's not afraid to get up and down off the floor anymore. Now, as you said, mm. she's turning 80 this year. That's huge. Mm. Not yeah. being afraid to get up oh, and massive. down off the floor. 
And the reason yeah. that I noticed this, and as trainers, this is what we do. You know, we can sit there one day and go, wow, that has improved. This is what she's mm. doing now. That's incredible. And so what I can see, Diane, each week in our FitFlex session, we have uh, what we call our how-to videos. So you get on alternates if you can't yep. do an exercise. And one of the exercises we're doing this week is called our ab lean back. So you're on your knees and you're leaning back, activating that core. One of the alternates was to go down into a tabletop position. Um, and uh, sorry, not the ab lean backs. It was the down dog with the toe touch. Down dog, yes. yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, and down dog can be, that's a bit of an intense move. Um, mm -hmm. But she, she opted to do the alternate. And that tells us as trainers that she's taking the time to watch that how-to video because she would rather get down, up and down off the floor and keep that movement going than opting mm. to stay standing to do an exercise. And that's huge. And mm. congratulations, Diane. That's I love it. I love that you're getting up and down off the floor and that that's not a scary thing anymore. Yes, yeah, so look, she's such an amazing woman um, and, and kudos to her as well too, you know, because she's working out with our other ladies that are, you know, 40 and 50 and 60 and she came to us at, at 78. She went, you know, I need to make some changes in my life. So, you know, how many other 78-year-olds do you know that would go, um, I need to I need to move. I'm becoming too stiff. I'm not strong enough, so I need to do something. And I know, look, my mum's in the same category as Diane. She won't go and do anything. She just it's like, well, no, I'm just going to sit here and wait for things to, you know, just slowly get worse. But Diane isn't. Mm -hmm. She's in there doing it. And at the end of her 12 months with us, she did. Oh, Sue, yay, you got your camera. Woo -hoo, we can see you. <laughs> and at the end of the, the 12 months, she took the time to write every single thing that she couldn't do that she can now do. And that was in 12 months. And that was through persistency and consistency in her workouts. I also love the fact that you know, we do take that time every single week. So, you know, the methodology behind the Fit Flex program is one that's uniquely different to, you know, any other workout that you're ever going to go and do. So we look at what our ladies can do and we go, okay, we're now ready to take this up a level. Or what we need to do is we need to focus on this particular thing because um, we're, you know, compromising ourselves and we want to improve that area. Um, and, and so that's how the workouts are designed. But what we do do is we put together those how-to videos which break it down step by step. But what we also do is, as you mentioned, we give those alternate workouts so that if they can't get up and down off the ground or if there's some level of injury or pain that we need to cater for, uh, they've got that alternate. So it's not about comparing yourself to somebody else and going, I need to keep up, because what you're doing in that instance is you are picking the one that is going to be right for you. But mind you, I am going to say on that, if we think that you're capable of more, we're going to tell you that as well too. Absolutely. Yeah. So you are going to say something there. I was going to say something going back to Diane and you were talking about her list after the 12 months and I remember the conversation mm. you were telling me that you had with Diane after two weeks and she oh, yeah. was getting ready to come to her FitFlex session and... She was like, why am I up this early going and doing a workout? <laughs> yeah. As she's tying her yeah. shoelaces. <clears throat> but then it clicked to her. I'm tying my shoelaces and I'm not struggling. So it's mm. those little things that you know that you are improving and you're getting better and better. 
tying you yeah absolutely such a small thing, absolutely such a big thing. yeah oh massive like my mother she can't lift her you know she couldn't just lift her leg up like this you know here's my foot um yeah. she has to use her other hands she has to use her hands to lift her legs up you know yeah. um and that's that's a big thing when it comes to mobility and you know being able to do the things that you love and enjoy yeah. because if you're not mobile you won't be able to do them so yeah yeah big shout even, out to even, you big round of applause diane i was just going to add to peter um and it's not just about the things you love and the and adore doing but it's about those everyday no. things like tying your shoelaces yeah no. exactly Mm, exactly. Now, so you've got someone that you want to give a shout out to. Tell me who that is and what's been happening in Sophie's world. Yes, well, Sophie, um, I had a bit of a chat to her a couple of weeks ago, actually. I phoned and had a bit mm -hmm. of a follow-up call with her. And then I really started to... Um, you know, just have a look at what she was doing. And what I found is with Sophie, she's she said to me that she's really found that um, being consistent, especially at, from in this year, um, the three days mm -hmm. a week working out, she's noticed such an improvement in her upper body strength and her back. She's not stooping over as much. And you can see she yeah. doesn't always... Um, she doesn't always keep up with everyone, but I do know that she'll mm. finish off what she's doing. And I do notice that she's actually, if not for all of the reps, some of them trying to go to the next level. And I think that's the other thing as well, that we challenge ourselves. And even if we can't, you know, you'll be doing the alternate and that's fine, especially if you've got an injury or, or that's what you need to do. But if you yeah. can also... If you can also then do a few reps at the next level up, because you're challenging yourself, and then you're improving, and you're you're um, you, you know you're getting up to that more advanced level then, and you're not saying oh well I'll just stay with the alternate uh, because that's easy to do. So it's I think that that's mm. what she's been mm. doing, and and she just said that she's found things like gardening and and her day to day work. She's not stooping. She's enjoying the garden she can be out there longer because she's feeling fitter by doing the three sessions a week and doing those um strengthening exercises i really like that you've actually mentioned that sue because i hadn't looked at it from that perspective um because one of the things that i know about sophie is that she had things that she needed to do and so when we were actually in um you know, face-to-face -face environment, uh, she wouldn't be able to get to all of those sessions. Mm. So mm. what we're now seeing and what you've noticed is that she actually does regimentally, you know, consistently come to the three sessions every single week. So mm. be because there's none of this rushing around, you know, driving somewhere, driving home and, and and fitting in extra time to it, she can just get out of bed, get to the session and then get on with everything else that she's got to do. And I know for a fact that over the years, her back has given her a lot of grief uh, and stopped uh. her a lot, a lot of times. So clearly what's, what's happening here is not only has she built up her upper body strength, but she's also built up her core strength oh. as well too mm. Mm. yeah and, and correcting her posture yeah. yes and correcting yeah. her posture yeah which is all part yeah. of core and everything else isn't it so yeah. you know she's mm. and I, and i think that also um with everybody being a bit more um connected with mind and body which we've been really focusing on, I think, um, over the last few months in particular, pe getting the yeah. uh, clients to think, well, what am I doing and why am I doing it? And even doing it slowly, which can be just as um, effective as doing 20 reps, you know, or something. If you do five slow ones and you're really controlled and using the yeah. correct muscles, 
muscles and the correct technique. So I think that that's been something that she's picked up as well as uh, as the other ladies. So learning to use their core in the um, in the correct way. Mm, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I, I'm just thinking about a, a, gr a group that I belong to and it's a fitness, fitness pro group. And one of the things that um, the, the person who runs the group actually asked just recently is, what is the one thing that drives you crazy, <laughs> you know? And Nelly, it, I think there were hundreds and hundreds of comments in regards to technique. So, you know, walking into a gym and just seeing how uh, people are standing to uh, go through an exercise or just how they're not engaging their whole entire body. And it's so, so true. And I know that we're all sticklers for, you know, making sure that our clients are getting the most and actually, you know, very focused on their posture and how they're standing and what they're doing first and foremost because there is absolutely no point going into an exercise and you being out of balance and then going in and doing it because all that's going to happen is that you're going to be making yourself more out of balance mm -hmm. and potentially could hurt yourself as well too so and, and there's so many simple things you can do. Now, I was, I was doing some exercises yesterday and I was thinking about that, the, the, these small muscles, those psoas muscles that so often they're not engaged. And so I was just actually playing around with some smaller techniques that we could do to actually make sure that they were engaged which means that we're going to be engaging that core, that core more, which in turn is going to help with posture, help with strength as well too. So um, there's just so much that the human body is able to do, is capable of, and but so much that we can harm it by not actually, you know, moving in the right way. Mm. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And mm. I think when you start off with a, you know, whether you're joining a gym or you're joining something online, um, do your research. Is there is there somebody there with the knowledge that mm. is going to show you the correct way? Or mm. yeah. is that person or that place just going to take your money and say, here you go? Mm. Mm. So really, I think yeah. you really need to do your research. Well, I just wanted to also say that, um, you know, that's why I think there could be people that feel a little bit, um, oh, I don't know, hesitant about a virtual studio, but that's what I like is the fact that we get the how-to videos. So that goes through the technique. You can look at all that before you mm -hmm. do the session, but then that's all reinforced within each of the three sessions on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, you know, we're taking that time to actually go through technique rather than just saying, well, we're just working out and we've got a 40-minute workout and off we go, bang, bang, bang. We're, you know, we're getting them to really focus on knowing what the technique is because if you don't know how to do it properly, you're going to damage yourself. So, yeah. Yes, totally yeah. true. Yeah, totally true. So, Sal, tell me what is that one, the one biggest lesson that you can take away from Diane, from what you see of Diane? What is the biggest lesson that you've learnt from her? importance i think it is mm -hmm. so you can see that it is so important to her to keep moving and her watching the how-to videos 
her getting up and down off the floor is just proof that her wanting to con continue to move freely in her life mm -hmm. is such a priority. You know, mm -hmm. we know over, over the past uh, 12 months, Diane's had a few um, aches and pains and issues and has been on yes. hold a couple of times. But she's never, she's always come back. She's never given up. And she ha doesn't have no. that give up attitude, yeah. Oh, no, she does not. No. And so how does that for you, so taking away that, that single lesson from her importance, how does that translate for you in what you do for your health and well-being? For me, not giving up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's an inspiration. Diane's an inspiration. Um, and it's about not giving up and doing what you have to do. Yes. That's, yeah, that's what I take away from Diane. Uh, not as a trainer, as a person, as you said, for my as health. As a person. Yep. yep, doing what you have to do. Mm, yeah, beautiful. And you, Sue, what is the biggest lesson that you've actually taken from from watching um, Sophie and, and having those chats with her? Well, I think for me it's the belief, belief in the fact that you can do more than what you think you can. Um, and even if it's only one or two reps more, it's that, that believing mm -hmm. that you can try something a bit more. And I think that that's encouraging when I see um, her doing that. And, and, you know, it might only be one or two reps more, but at least she's giving it a go. And I think that's what, you know, reminds me yeah. that, yes, we're capable, we are capable of more than what we think we are. We just have to give it a go. Mm. Yeah. And so are there moments for you personally where you are a little bit hesitant and you, you, um, channel Sophie in your head? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, even as, you know, just because we're trainers and coaches doesn't mean we don't no. have our days where we go, oh, I might do the alternate today. Um, and then you think about it. <laughs> and you <Head> think, up. <laughs> yeah, and you think about, well, we're human, aren't we? But you think about, um, and because of that, we understand. Because we're human, we understand what everyone goes through. It's no point me saying, oh, yeah, I get out there and I, you know, do this, that and the other every single yeah. day and, and I'm a robot and I'm this and that. You know, if we are all have ha we all have days and that's why we can relate to how people feel. So I think for me, when I see someone like Sophie giving it a go, I think to myself, well, come on, you know, you might say to yourself you want to do the alternate, but you know you're much more advanced than that, two more reps than what you'd normally do. So, um, yeah, it, it just encourages you to, to just keep trying. I was doing a – I got sent a workout yesterday uh, from – a conference that I did and so I decided I'd do this workout so I'm in here you know and it's going on my screen and I'm doing this workout and then I went oh okay and and it was it was a full push-up but it was lower lower so it was one two push one two push one two push and there was one point there and I was a full push-up and there was one point there where I dropped to my knees and I went if my women saw me now, they'd be going, Peter, get up on your toes. <laughs> I was channeling everybody. <laughs> so it was like, get up on your toes and stop being so, <laughs> such a, such a weaky. <laughs> and giving you and giving yourself permission not to, you know, not to put in. And isn't it true that the winds come from the things you do when nobody sees you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think that's a perfect yeah. place to leave it. Yeah. Yes. So thanks, Sel. Thanks, Sue, for sharing the stories of Sophie and Diane. Big clap for you guys sharing it and for them for actually doing such a, a wonderful job.
So ladies, each time you think about um, just wanting to stop, you're hesitant. Um, what I want you to do is to think about a couple of things here. Channel some of these ladies that we've talked about. And then the other thing is think about that green light. You know, you might be sitting on the orange light right now. It's going to turn green for you. Just take that step. Just keep moving forward. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all soon. Have a Bye great now. weekend. Bye. Bye.